Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at previously used CPA questions. Those questions are the real deal. Those questions appeared on the CPA exam in the past, and those questions are the re released by the AI CPA, the source of all CPA questions. So those questions will be covering the FAR. Please remember that those questions may, may or may not appear on the exam again, but the concept will be tested differently. So although you may not see the question word for word, it's good to know if you can solve them because they will tell you at the level of difficulty you'll be facing on the exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. YouTube is where, my, where I park my 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover, including the number of lectures and many CPA questions. On my website, you have access to additional information such as notes, PowerPoint slides, multiple choice, true, false, 2000 plus CPA questions. So if you're studying for your CPA, I, I strongly suggest you visit my website. So we're going to start with the first question. Notice I hide the key. And the reason I hide the key because I want you to pause this video and see if you can answer the question first. If you can answer the questions, that's great. Then look at the solution see how i approach this question so always pause the video see if you can answer the question okay then see how i approached it the first thing i'm going to tell you this question is remembering and understanding once you see it's remembering and understanding it means it should be fairly easy in a sense that you either memorize the concept or you have to really if you understand the concept you should be able to answer the question in a moment okay so the first question read the primary purpose of not-for-profit organization statement of activities is to provide relevant information to its what? So simply put, the statement of activities is the income statement of not-for-profit. Who are they providing information to? Now you should know this, like literally, you read this question, this is a five second answer. Who are we, who are we providing answers to? We're providing answers to whoever finance us, whoever gives us resources, and those are the resource providers, not managers. The incomes, the statement of activities is not designed to give relevant information to the managers. It's designed to give relevant information about maybe about the managers, but not to them, to the beneficiaries that we don't call them beneficiaries, really not for profit. They don't have beneficiaries. They do have beneficiaries, but the beneficiaries are the are the people that receive the benefit from them. That's not who we target. We target the people that gives us the money, the resource providers. So that's out. State regulatory body, no. State regulatory bodies, they might look at this information, but they, do, they might require other information, but not the statement of activities. The statement of activities goes to the people that gives us money. Why? Because the people that gives us money as nonprofit, they want to know how are we spending the money. When someone gives you money, because they believe in your cause. If they believe in your cause, you want to let them know how are you spending your money. How are you spending your money? How much of your money is being spent on administrative? How much of the money is being spent on actually helping people? How much of the money is being spent on uh, uh, maintenance? So on and so forth. So the answer is A is an apple. Again, it takes, you know, I, I go over the answers just kind of to explain the concept as well. Okay, let's take a look at this question. Again, this question is remembering and understanding. So it should take you very quickly to answer questions like this. Financial statements prepared for voluntary health and welfare organization for not-for-profit must report expenses by the following classification. Do they report their expenses by functional, natural, or both? And the answer is, you should know, you should memorize this because this is remembering, remembering. Remembering means you got to know it. I'm going to explain it to you why, so you understand it, but you got to remember it. it. It covers both functional and natural. So the answer is A as an apple, yes. Now, what is functional expenses? Functional expenses is basically you break down the expenses by program, by program, by, for example, you could have, break down the expenses by program. You could break down the expenses by management and general. You could break down the expenses by fundraising as, as, as a function, as an activity. Or, or you could break down the expenses, a natural, ex, natural classification, which is, what is natural classification? It basically supporting, uh, sorting and reporting the expenses by the nature of the expense. So simply put, for example, you would have uh, salaries and wages. This will be salaries salaries and wages for example you could have supplies you could have utilities okay this is 
so, uh, reporting the expenses by natural. So the answer is both. The voluntary health and welfare organization, they report the expenses, functional and natural. Second, third question. Z, a non-governmental, not-for-profit organization, it seems this session talks about not-for-profit and governmental, uses the indirect method to prepare its statement of cash flow. In determining the net cash provided by operating activity, so we're looking at the operating activity, S must add back which of the following to the change in net assets. So what do we add back? So there's, we're adding something back. A, do we add back purchase of equipment? No, if we purchase an equipment, it's an outflow of resources if we paid cash and that's not operating so that's out payment on long-term debt we're paying that's paying that that's not really operating do we add back depreciation and the answer is yes depreciation is a non cash expense depreciation is a non cash expense therefore depreciation is added back decrease in accounts payable well the if accounts payable if a liability goes down our cash goes down as well our cash goes down but we don't add it back the question is did add back add back the change we add back the depreciation if we have any depreciation we add it back now if we when we pay the liabilities we don't add it back actually it's an in out of sorry outflow of money outflow of cash so when decrease in liabilities it's an outflow of cash again this question is remembering and understanding you need to know you add back depreciation to the cash flow statement to the operating section of the cash flow statement whether it's governmental or for profit so you need to know this and by the way non-governmental and non-for-profit i have i have a whole course about governmental and not-for-profit accounting check out my youtube if you have any doubts about these topics number nine when, when, when there's a lot of numbers read the question question first what amount should be reported in net cash provided by financing activities in box statement of cash flow so simply put we have a list of transaction and they want us to know which one is financing what is financing well you need to know before you even look at the questions immediately in your mind you should be thinking own stocks own debt so when you're dealing with your own stocks and your own debt okay let's see proceeds from the sale of investments well that's investments it has nothing to do with your own stocks it has nothing to do with your own debt that's out purchase of property plant and equipment that's out that's investing proceeds from long-term debt oh hold on you receive money from long-term debt that's financing remember your own debt loss on sale of an investment nope so the answer is 100,000 the answer is D D as in David okay let's take a look at this question this question is application application means it's a little bit more involved a little bit more than remembering and understanding so the question reads net income for the year was for um, was for no, the question reads what should be reporting as earnings per share EPS the first thing you have to have the they have to have the uh, formula memorized EPS is net income minus preferred dividend if you have any preferred dividend divided by a uh, number of shares outstanding for the year like basically um, the weighted average number of shares outstanding so first you gotta know this much okay so let's see what we have t company had 120,000 common stock outstanding on january 1st on april 1st something happened it issued 40,000 additional shares okay outstanding all year were 10,000 non-convertible preferred of which five dollar per share was declared during the year okay so we had 120,000 shares up until April 1st so those were outstanding 312 of the year then starting starting in April we had 160,000 shares why because we added we issued 40,000 so we had 160 and those 160 were outstanding 912 of the year so first we have to find the denominator okay let's find the denominator let's find the denominator so we have 312 times 120 312 times 120 equal to 30,000 I'm just going to write this number down and let's clear this 912 912 times 160 that's 120 so those equal to whoops those equal to 30,000 
those equal to 150 what was it 120 I believe uh, 120 not 150 120 let's go back there equal to 120 so the denominator is 150,000 so the denominator here the weighted number with the weighted average number of shares outstanding is 150,000 now if you don't know what I'm doing here I'm, I'm computing the weighted average number of shares outstanding uh, you want to go back to my chapter 16 in intermediate accounting if in case you are you, you have any issues with this okay now I need to know the numerator 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 net income is giving 480,000 minus preferred dividend sometimes you may or may not have preferred dividend and you have to be very careful if preferred dividend is giving outstanding all year were 10,000 shares of non-convertible preferred stock on which five dollar per dividend was declared guess what if it's declared I have to deduct it so I have 10,000 shares I'm gonna have to pay them five dollars so 50,000 out of my profit goes to the preferred shareholders now all what I have to do is take 480 minus 50 480 minus 50 equal to 430 430 divided by 150 and let's see what do we get for that if we take 430,000 which is net income minus the preferred dividend <coughs> minus 150 equal to oops 430 divided by 150 whoops 430 or 430,000 divided by 150,000 2.86 and that's 2.866 which is 2.87 and that's the answer now we have to be careful in this problem they told us the dividend was declared since the dividend is declared we deduct it we have to be careful whether the dividend is declared or not and whether the dividend is accumulative or not if it's accumulative you always deduct it if it's not cumulative you have to wait to, to determine to determine whether it's declared or not so there's a little bit more involved in this I cannot give you the full picture go to my intermediate accounting chapter 16 if you have any issues about this topic this is an important topic this is only computing basic earning per share you might have to compute the diluted earnings per share which is a little bit more involved so notice this question is application application means you have to take a topic and apply it so what, what I'm trying to tell you is you want to save the time for questions like these for question like <clears throat> for question like these okay in the next session obviously I'm gonna be working more questions about the real deal previously used uh, previously used CPA questions that's recently released by the AI CPA as always go to my website for additional resources if you're studying for your CPA exam subscribe invest in your career you study one time for the CPA so make it good and pass the exam